Hello everyone, I'm the postdoc of the University of Southern California and I know a lot of my subscribers are the undergraduate student and the PhD student. So um, in this vlog, I will demonstrate how to do a journal club presentation. Also, I will introduce the uh, updated information of the single cell sequencing and how to use this new technology to interpret the developmental events. So I hope this uh, demo will bring you new ideas of how to professional present your own data or a paper in your lab meeting. Hello everyone, today I'm gonna to present a paper from Cell Journal. This paper's name is Single Cell Sequencing Reviews Regulatory Gene Expression Dynamics Leading to Lineage Commitment in Early T-Cell Development. And the author come from California Institute of Technology. And this is the paper newly published in 2019. So firstly, I will introduce the background and the motivation of this study. As we know that the RNA sequencing has been used in many fields of the biomedical medicine, such as the developmental study and the uh, mechanism study of the disease. And the bulk RNA sequencing is the technology that to detect the information of a mixed population. Recently, a new technology about the RNA sequencing has been developed, which called the single cell sequencing. Uh, from this workflow, we know that the single cell RNA sequencing means a cell will be dissociated from the solid tissues. And after dissociation, they will be uh, separated into the single cell, and the RNA will be extracted from every cell. And after the reverse transcription, the RNA will be changed into the cDNA. After amplification, the cDNA will be used for uh, the construction of the library. And after uh, enough cDNA have been obtained, they will be used for the sequencing and map back to the cell to establish the expression profile of individual cells. So this technology is mainly used for the identification of the cell types. For example, if we have a mixed population of the cells and we want to know how many subtypes are included in this mixed population, then the single cell sequencing is an ideal tool for us to identify every cell type in this population. And the pro of the single cell sequencing is providing us uh, nominally unbiased full transcriptome information and also separating distinct cell types within complex populations as we have mentioned before. However, there are also some cons of the single cell sequencing. Because in most of the RNA-seq applications, the accuracy and the robustness of measurements are biased toward highly expressed genes. As we have said before, the RNA are obtained from individual cells. That means the amount of the RNA is very low. And if we only have such low amount of the RNA, then uh, it is highly possible that only the high expressed uh, gene can be amplified. So that's the limitation of the general single cell RNA sequencing, which is they can only show the uh, expression of the high expressed uh, genes. However, according to our knowledge uh, in the developmental studies, we know that there's a lot of genes encoding key transcription factors are often expressed at low copy number per cells. So that comes to the problem that if we want to look into the expression of these key transcription factors, then it's impossible for us to use the general single cell sequencing to detect the such genes. To solve these problems, more accurate and robust quantification method has been developed, such as the SIGFISH, which is the single molecule fluorescence in situ hybridization that can visualize and count individual mRNA transcripts directly in individual cells at very high sensitivity. And except for the SIGFISH, there is another deep sequencing of the single cell RNA sequencing technology and the name is also called Fludine C1 SmartSeq2. 
and the most general single cell sequencing used now, which can detect general RNA sequencing but not that full or deep, is called the 10x chromium. According to our knowledge, most of the paper use this one because they can both cover a lot of cell numbers and also find uh, much RNA information. But the limitation is also reviewed is that they cannot detect the low and the median stress the genes. So the goal of this work is to resolve a continuum of changing transcriptome states within a developmental pathway and relate them to changes in the controlling regulatory network state. And their targeting cell fate is the early T cell development. Okay, so the second part is the problem and the setting. So as we know that this group are aiming at the T cell fate and their development. According to uh, the developmental state study before, including the RNA sequencing, Western blot, and immunostaining, uh, actually the stage of the T cell development has been well studied. And most of the markers that is important for the T cell lineage establishment and maturation has been reported, such as the CD25, BCL11B, and the beta selection. And according to the expression pattern of these uh, markers, the uh, T cell development can be divided into three stages. The first stage is the early T cell progenitors, which is short for ETP in the later presentation, represent the earliest defined stage in each cohort of the mouse cymocytes. And the second stage is the DN2A cell with the committed state and after that, we will change from the uncommitted to the committed status, which is indicated by the upregulation of the BCL11B. So according to this schematic figures, we know that the T cell development has been well studied now. And what's the left questions for this process? So the questions remains here that how the ETP transit from the uh, immature to mature and then enter the DN2A stage. So according to the knowledge now, we know that none of the ETP markers are exclusive to T cells. So the so-called ETP population could also include committed non-T lineage precursors. So that means when we use the non-markers to isolate the ETP, we might also isolate some non-T cell lineage and contaminate the ETP population. And if we want to look into the cell fate or differentiation of the ETP, the contaminated cells of other lineage may disrupt our studies and bring a lot of noise in the final uh, data. And the second question is come to uh, the snapshot problem. When we're trying to do the transcriptome uh, analysis in the ETP population or single ETP cells, then it is highly possible that the population of the cell is heterogeneity due to the different input origins, as we have said before, the contaminate, contaminated non-T cell lineage or different developmental stage. As we know that even in the same population, the cell may uh, endure different stage of the differentiation. So when we try to look into the transcriptome expression pattern, it's very hard for us to define what is the exact stage the cell are in. And except for that, it's also uh, several questions left for us, such as we want to know how many descript intermediate are included during the transition. How can we use this substage definition to interpret the uh, transcriptome data? And also, we are very curious about whether the genes are all changed into the monotonic pattern, such as uh, uh, simply upregulated or downregulated, or more like several waves that uh, appear and then disappear during the intermediate stage. So, um, taking all this question together, these uh, groups are trying to use the single cell sequencing to uh, answer these questions. And uh, here is the marker I summarized from their study that they used to uh, define the non-stage of the ETP and the DN2A cells. And also some new markers they find, they 
in these studies that uh, use the single cell sequencing. So here is the very uh, amazing result they have obtained that indicate that except for that we can use the single cell sequencing to identify different subgroups of the population, we can also find some novel markers to isolate and purify the population. If we can identify the cluster and uh, find some genes that unique to that stage.